Hey, I've gotten some questions about how you can have a more complex uh, sort of interaction with sprites in Bitsy. So I'm going to show you an example here in Bitsy 7 of how we can have a, a richer conversation, I guess, with the cat. Right now, this is a new game. If I hit play, the cat basically just says I'm a cat, and that's the end. What I'd like to do is have the cat keep track of how many times we've bumped into each other and um, if we've never bumped into each other it should say hi nice to meet you and if it if we have then it should say uh, you again and say how many times we've bumped into each other and then finally if I get to a point where I've where I uh, meet the cat three times it will give me a key so we know that we have items here and one of them is the key so uh, let's look at the inventory here and we can see how many items we have so when we bump into the cat that third time we should see key go up to one there's also another section in here called variables now I know that I'm going to have to keep track of the number of times that I meet the cat so I'm going to do that using a variable now there's a default one here called a and it's set to 42 that's not so useful but we'll leave it there and uh, actually I'll delete it and then I'll add a new one called cat count and I'll start it at zero so this is the number of times I've bumped into the cat it starts at zero and what I'd like is for um, every time I bump into the cat for that number to go up so let's try that first I'll click on the little arrow here to open the dialogue editor and because I've got this uh, icon here highlighted it automatically shows the one for the cat now there are other ones here and you see as I switch to them that gets unhighlighted but let me click on that and it'll jump back to whatever drawing I've got uh, open here so that's good it keeps them in sync if this dialogue uh, if this window wasn't open we can always click it here under dialogue let me bring back the inventory okay so uh, here instead of saying I'm a cat I'm just going to delete that entirely and I'm going to add something else it's going to be under here item and variable actions and I'm going to change the value of a variable that I've set up right now it's changing a which doesn't even exist anymore so let me click on that and say actually I want cat count to be equal to whatever cat count was before plus one cat count equals cat count plus one that's adding one to whatever was uh, contained in this cat count variable so let's try it out I'll hit play and when I bump it to the cat we can see over here that cat count uh, highlights for a moment and then changes to one I'll go back and do it again you see it goes to two and three and so on now a side effect is that if I just keep pushing into it it will just keep going up I don't know if that'll be a problem let's see so uh, this is working and you can see when I stop the game it goes back down to zero now I how can I get it to decide uh, make a decision about what how to respond based on the value of cat count that's the other thing now I'm gonna hit add here and it's tucked under lists it's called a branching list and this is like an if then else statement which you would see in, uh, in programming languages so if the thing in white here is true then do this black part and otherwise do this black part so what I want to do is click on this and right now it only allows us to select between items in inventory that doesn't help so I'm gonna click the uh, little calculator icon here to edit that expression now this either be is true or false and that's what I'm trying to set up here so I'll hit all clear to just wipe it out and I'll say the variable cat count if that variable is greater than or equal to one that means I've visited the cat before so let me hit save and in that case if cat count is greater than or equal to one I want him to say you again and otherwise you know that if that wasn't true then that means it's probably zero I guess it could be a negative number if we broke something somewhere but we're gonna assume that it's a zero so in this case I want to say uh, hi we've never met okay and let's see if this works I will hit play and uh, bump into the cat and wait he says you again so something's broken let me watch the highlighting that happens over here when I highlight you can see that um, there's an order to the way that these flash and so it actually is going straight down this list of different things that we've got in the dialogue the first thing it does is change cat count to be one more than it was before so when I start the game uh, it should be at zero but before it even checks to see if it's greater than or equal to one it's already added one to it so there's something wrong with the order here and the easiest way to fix that is to click on this and just move it down so now it checks first, responds, and then at the very end, it adds one 
to cat count to say that this is this is being recorded as another visit. So let's try that again. I will bump into the cat. It says hi, we've never met. Bump into the cat again. It says you again, you again, and so on. You can see the number increasing over here. Okay, that's good. Now, what I actually want is for it to say you again. Um, we've seen each other x times. Now, instead of x here, I'd like to have it spit out the value of cat count. I don't. I've never seen a way to actually have it to to tell it to do that in the graphical interface here. But luckily, we can click on this show code button, and it actually shows us a kind of text version of what we just defined in the other. Uh, kind of graphical end. So you can see that there's a structure to this. There's curly braces here. And everything that happens in curly braces here is um, our if statement. So this is uh, if cat count is greater than or equal to one, and then the question mark, this is what to do. And else, this is what to do. And then tacked onto the end is a whole other command in curly braces that is cat count equals cat count plus one. So it seems like commands happen inside curly braces. These distinct items or actions happen in curly braces. If we go back to the section here, you can see there's like one thing here, that's a branching list. So that was in curly braces. And then another thing here, adding one to uh, cat count, and that was in curly braces. So we've got two things in curly braces. Well, what I can do is here, instead of the X, I can put in curly braces a command called say. And if I put the name of a variable in here, it's going to, um, make sure I've got a space there. It's going to say whatever was in cat count. So I'm gonna hit hide code. And actually, it's showing it properly here in the graphical interface. It says, you again, we've seen each other and then say, uh, say, which is print the cat count in the dialog box, and then a space and times. So although it's able to display it here, I don't know of a way to actually make it do this. So uh, it's convenient to be able to go back and forth between the text version and the graphical version. Let's play this game. The first time it says, hi, we've never met. The next time it says, you again, we've seen each other one times. Now, uh, and, and two times and so on. Now there's something charming about it saying we've seen each other one times. Uh, maybe at the very end of this video, I'll show you how you could fix that. So the first time it says we've seen each other once before. And then after that, it shows numbers instead. So, but that's a little more advanced. And so I'll, I'll hold off on that. So what else do we need to do? I think the other thing I want to do is uh, when I've seen the cat three times, it should give me a key. So um, let's say, hmm, how can we do that? Well. I think um, I think we'll just keep what's here and then I'll add on to that. And so unfortunately, I can only add things to the bottom of the list. So that means my cat count is gonna be in the wrong place again, but I can fix that. So what I wanna do is, uh, again, a branching list and say if the cat count is greater than or equal to three, I could just say it's equal to three. I guess that works too. If the cat count, is equal to three. So I guess, you know, I'm gonna say greater than or equal, well, no, I'm gonna say equal to three because if I bump into the cat a fourth and a fifth time, I don't know, I don't know what I wanna do. I don't think I wanna give a key again. So um, we'll just keep it at equals to three. So that's just if it gets to three, then we'll do this thing. And that thing is, um, say, here's a key, here's a key. That's it, that's good enough. And the other thing I wanna do is uh, I wanna add something to this so it's not just going to say that, I'm going to add a variable action and choose the set item count. So I'm gonna set the number of keys to one. So when I'm in something like this, I can click on the blue area and it'll kinda of jump out of the editing mode. And so let's look at it this now, it's a little clearer. It says, oh, that didn't help. Okay, it says, uh, first of all, let me, I know I want cat count equals cat count plus one to be at the very bottom. So let's push that down button again. So let's follow the whole thing through. If cat count is greater than or equal to one, say you again, we've seen each other cat count times. If it's not greater than or equal to one, i.e. it's zero, then say, hi, we've never met. Then a totally separate branching list, which says if the cat count is equal to three, then say, here's a key and give the, uh, the, the avatar a key. Now we don't need this else statement. There's nothing else to do here. So I can actually click on the else part and trash it. 
let's try this game. So the first time it says, hi, we've never met. The next time it says, you again, we've seen each other one times. And then again, we've seen each other two times. And we've seen each other, each other three times. Here's a key. A little clunky there, and I might do something a little different, but um, that's it. Now, if I go to items, I have a key. Uh, let's fix this. I'll hit stop, and I think what I want to do is, before I say here's a key, let me add something, which is um, I'll add dialogue page break. And again, this is useful because I can show you how you can move these things around, right? So inside of the if, if it's equal to three, it's going to do three things. It's going to say, here's a key. It's going to add uh, a key to my inventory, and it's going to do a page break. But they're out of order. Let me move this up. So the page break should be right before it says, here's a key. That way it doesn't just bump into the previous dialogue. So let's see what this game looks like. Uh, first time, hi, we've never met. Second time, we've seen each other one times. Second time, it says you again, we've seen each other two times. And then the third time, we've seen each other three times. And new page or page break gives us a new dialogue that says, here's a key. Okay, um, I think that works. You know, I think there's also, uh, just to just to kind of fill this out, we can also say here's a key and put an actual key drawing there. So you can see this is actually inserting some code in there, which is print item one. Item one is the key, I guess. Item zero is probably T. If we wanted to see what those are, we can actually go to the game data I click here, uh, somewhere in here will be a item zero. And if you look kind of with your squinted eyes, you can see that's a teacup in there with made out of ones. And it actually says the name is T. And then here, item number one is the key. And if you squint, you can kind of see a key in there. So everything is contained in the game data, including the code for the dialogue we just made. So all the code is right there. So again, we can just uh, click out here and look at the code. There it is, there's my page break, which we can see is uh, in curly braces, PG. So at some point, I suppose we could just get good enough that we just type this stuff instead of using the graphical interface. Uh, here, we're just showing item one, a little, uh, I, oops, uh, no, here, we're showing a little key icon. So if I hide code, uh, we should actually see that it's actually translated what used to be in code. No, no, it's right there, it's still in code. So. That's good. Let's try this out one last time here. We've never met. One time, two times, three times. Here's a key with a little key icon. Okay, so hopefully that's enough. That's um, showing you that you can actually be really kind of uh, expansive in this, this how this dialogue works. And branching list is really the key to making that complex kind of interaction. You also saw how you can use show code to actually edit or even just type things in here. To change how it works. Now I'm going to add one more thing that I think is kind of hard to do in the graphical interface, so I'm going to just add it in here and see if I can make it work. You could stop the video at this point, I think, and play around because that's enough information for you, but uh, let's see if I can make uh, that first branching list actually be an if then or if then else if. I don't know. I don't know how we say it in English, but what I want is to say if it's equal to one equals equals one, then uh, I want to say, hey, we've seen each other once before. Not sure why there's so much lag on my keyboard. But, um, so that's that's this one. And then I can put another dash and say, if cat count is greater than one, Do this and then if neither of those conditions is true then there's a kind of catch-all here else at the end that says hi we've never met let's see what it translates that to when I click hide code looks good it says if cat count is one then do this else if cat count is greater than one do this and else meaning that was neither of those two above say hi we've never met this is the final version here. This, this really is going to work better. So we don't get that clunky thing where it says, we've seen each other one uh, times before. So let's try this one last version of the game. 
Uh, bump into the cat, says hi, we've never met. Second time, it says, hey, we've seen each other once before. And the third time, it says, you again, we've seen each other two times and three times, and there's a key. And I can easily change this if I said, well, three times isn't quite enough. I wanted to, to do it, I have to go to five times, right? So you just change this number to five, and now it has to, I have to bump into the cat five times before it says, here's a key. So hopefully that shows you all the things that are possible using dialogues. I think there's probably more stuff, but really it all has to do with uh, branching lists and the idea that you can even branch them as uh, in this if then else, if then else, if then else, else kind of structure. It can get really infinitely complex, I guess. And, uh, and you can also just type it in here once you get the hang of what this looks like. And of course, the game data is always updating with whatever I do over here. So uh, you can download that and even edit it outside and then bring it back in. I don't know. That would be crazy. I think it's better to try and stick in here. That's just kind of the spirit of this tool is that it's kind of simple to use and everything is self-contained. So there you go. Take care. Hope you have some good luck with your games.